So my name is Eleanor Newbegin. I uh, specialise in the history of modern South Asia, but I'm also the convener of our two MA history programmes here in the SOAS History Department. And I thought I'd open this webinar session um, by talking you through our programmes, introducing you to SOAS, explaining what we do, and talking you through the two, really, the sort of the two to four different programme options we run here. After that, I'll be taking questions. Um, and um, if you put your questions through on the uh, chat function, I can answer those through speech um, and hopefully answer all the questions that you have. So just to sort of talk you through what we offer you here. Um, SOAS, at a glance, and at, the, at the, the level of SOAS itself, SOAS is internationally renowned for its research and teaching uh, in, 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 in the regions of um, uh, Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Um, we offer well over 100 graduate programs. We are traditionally, we were set up over 100 years ago as uh, a graduate level um, studies institution, which means that rather than, whereas most universities in the UK have started at undergraduate level and added on their graduate studies, we are initially from the, from the beginning, so as has been a graduate level institution, uh, which has added on undergraduate studies. What this really means is that as a graduate student, as you are at the heart of what we do, and I think all of our students agree that rather than being a second class citizen, as can happen in some institutions, graduate students at SOAS are very much the core of, of our community and are involved in all the different aspects of life here. We offer 100 graduate programmes, but also a lot of capacity for you to build a pro, a, an MA programme that suits your particular interests. We offer a core course in, in history, but we also allow you to choose um, either a year long or two term long open, open um, subjects in, in, in other disciplines. We also have an unparalleled range of non-European languages that you can learn here, either as part of your degree or as an option running alongside your degree. We strongly encourage you to, to take that up and, and, and you'll find that lots of our, your tutors here will really kind of help you, help you to navigate that and encourage you with that. We also have um, an incredible library, um, very much uh, seen as one of, the, we're one of the UK's national research libraries. People come from all over the world to come and work here. So we really do offer international, internationally renowned levels of resources here to help you with your studies. So that's SOAS. To talk a little bit more about what studying history at SOAS looks like, um, we are the only history department uh, in Britain, and I think I think in Europe more generally, to have a history department that is focused exclusively on the regions of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. Um, our courses are heavily focused around discipline. We will teach you historical method. You will learn through our core course in the MA program. Um, you'll have a very deep learning of um, the debates that have made the subject of history as it is today. Um, but our courses are also designed specifically to look at history of these specific regions of the world. So history itself is, is a discipline that emerged very much from the European Enlightenment. Um, and, and our courses are set up to help you to critique the subject of history itself. So you will study the history of the regions that, that we focus on here, but we'll also ask you to think about what history looks like from those regions. So what does the subject and the institutions and the resources that we use to look at to, to study history, what do those look like? How can you engage with them from, from a non-European perspective? Or you know, how can we critique the discipline of history, not just simply accept it as the definitive way of looking at the past. Um, we offer a very good teacher-staff ratio. Um, our class sizes are, are, are typically, we run, the history department endeavours to run most of its teaching through seminar level teaching, which means that we have small classes. We endeavour to cap classes an absolute maximum of 20 and to run them at a smaller level than that wherever we can. The other thing that makes us unique is that we teach about the areas and the, the subjects that we research. So there's a great deal of passion in what we teach. Uh, and it means that you get cutting edge classes um, uh, really based around new research and, and based around the, the stuff that we're most interested in. And, I, and you know, what we want to do with our classes is to get you excited and interested in that too. 
to, to talk a little bit more also about our, our student cohort, um, it isn't all about us and our passions and, and the subjects that we like to teach. We're also very interested in you. We have a very diverse student cohort at MA level, um, which is a challenge, but also an exciting part of teaching at the MA level. People come to us straight from their BAs. They come from us, come to us from BAs where they haven't studied any non-European or American history before, or they come to us from from um, area studies BAs. People also come to us after working, um, you know, having finished their BA some time ago, working either in the UK or more internationally. And a lot of students come to us from outside the UK and, and Europe more generally. So our student body is, is very diverse. Um, you will have a, a networking experience. I mean, you will learn from us, but you will also learn from your peers. And we know that a lot of our students stay in touch with, with the people that they meet at SOAS and, and continue to work together and, 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 and communicate together long after they've left us. We, we recognise the different reasons why people are coming to SOAS to study an, an, an MA. Um, some people will be looking for an academic career path, but many others don't. And we seek to build that into our courses. Our courses are designed quite thematically to give you a sound foundation on which to build your knowledge, but also to allow you to take those themes up in ways that interest you specifically. So while you can tailor make your program, you can also choose areas of interest within each of the courses that you study with us and, and really develop your interests um, wherever they lie. Um, we'll also work with you particularly around your dissertation, which is a piece of work that can lead you to multiple destinations, either to um, an academic one in terms of, of building on, on work for a PhD or um, uh, for a, for a non-academic career path where you can, you can do research and, and collect information. Um, you, know, you might be using um, you, you might use your research skills that you're using for the dissertation to work for policy teams to, to, to do many other kind of research based work outside of academia. The uh, fact that we have a student, a diverse student body means that we also, the, the trajectory, the parts that they follow after studying with us are also pretty diverse. Um, many students do go on to study uh, for PhDs, do carry on with the academic career path, but lots don't. Um, those that don't go on to, to do PhDs uh, go move into a kind of wide variety of career options. Certainly, a lot of students go off and join charity organisations and NGOs, but other people come to study with us in order to go on to careers that make a lot more money than that. Uh, we, you, know, you don't just have to be kind of right on charity worker to, to study at SOAS. Um, at the bottom of the slides that I hope you can see at the moment, um, I've just given some details of, of students who studied with us recently. Alison um, was working at Deloitte, came and did her MA here um, in, in the middle of that, and following her MA, went on to take up a cultural internship at the Royal Historical Palaces, um, which led her to go on to do research at the VNA, uh, which had led led her to take take up that career, the PhD path. Um, she's now working at UCL. Um, while continuing her teaching fellowship at, at the VNA, Dewey left uh, our, left SOAS to go back to, to Indonesia where she was working previously. Um, she joined a right back to this group which and is now working at the University of Indonesia. Rob worked um, did his, his, his MA with us and is now working at the BBC and we do have a lot of students go on to, to take up careers in, in journalism, both in Britain and more internationally. So, your MA can take you to multiple destinations, um, as can the people that you study with here and, and that you meet with while you're studying here. Great. Uh, so, so that's a bit of the background um, uh, of, of, of SOAS and of, of, of the programmes that we offer. I want now to, to, to really talk you through the, the, the different programmes that, that, that we can provide here. We really have two MA programmes. We have the straight MA history, um, and we also have the MA historical research methods. With both of those programmes, you have the option to take the programme with an intensive language um, setup, which I'll talk you through separately. So we have four programmes. 
um, if you include the intensive language setup, but they operate around two different ideas of kind of the MA history core. So let's start with our main MA history program. Um, we have the MA history and we also have the MA history with pathway option. I think this produces quite a lot of confusion from people who've written to me, uh, the, the pathway option. Um, the default system with this is that you will get an MA history um, degree. We have the pathway option, which allows you to connect your history, your MA history degree to a particular region. The pathway is designed for students, particularly for students who want to emphasize a regional speciality. Uh, so for students who want to go on and do a PhD in a particular area studies program, they want to show that they have an MA history, but with a focus on that particular region, or for people who have a very regionally focused research future ahead of them. Um, so there's absolutely no obligation to select the pathway. The pathway is an option should you need it for whatever you want to use the MA History program to do. Um, so the MA History program is set up in the following way. We have 100, it's comprised of 180 credits. 60 credits of this comes through our through the dissertation that you will write over the summer period, the 10,000 word dissertation, and 120 credits are made up through taught courses. The 120 credits of taught courses are divided up in, in the following ways. You have to do our core course, so you'll do our core course as a cohort, um, the course Debating Pasts and Crafting Histories. This is our methodology course designed to give you a, a really kind of deep level understanding of historical methodology and the debates that are relevant for studying history in the regions that we're focused in. So it is um, an introduction to archival work, to, to research work, but also helping you to see how the regions and the themes that you, you might be interested in have been looked at broadly and specifically around the, the, the regions that you're, you're studying. So you'll look at um, different kinds of archives. Uh, you'll also look at debates around political theory, gender in history, um, global history, military history, imperial history. Um, so, so this is, it's, it's a, a, a very, um, well-established and um, focused method historically uh, of course focused on historical methodology but specifically for, for the history of asia africa and the middle east alongside your core course you need to do 90 credits of other taught courses all of the courses that we teach within the history department that are on our website are described as list a courses all of these are 15 credit courses that run for one term only. We've standardized all of our courses. These are assessed only through coursework. We don't have exams, um, but, and coursework, usually typically two pieces of coursework um, uh, written over the space of a 10 week term period, including with, with some extra time around the breaks. Um, you need to take 60 credits from our list A courses, so 60 credits of history courses, which means four different courses that we offer within the history department. Um, you can then take up to 30 credits of open options, so 30 credits of courses from other departments. Many other departments have also opted for the term long 15 credit courses like us, but there are also a couple of year long 30 credit courses. So you can effectively do two, one or two um, courses from outside the history department. If you want to do the MA history with pathway, you need to take 45 credits of history courses. You need to take three history courses alongside your core course. Um, three history courses from the particular region you wish to specialize in. But otherwise, if you just want to do the straightforward MA history course, you need to take your 60 credits, your, your four courses, and they can be from any region. So you'll use term one and term two while you're studying at SOAS to do your core course and to do your, your um, your, uh, your your chosen taught course modules. So effectively, you're studying your core course throughout the year, um, and then you are also studying three courses each term um, if you're going to work on the term long model. 
Um, at the end of the second term, you'll need to submit a dissertation plan, which we'll help you with throughout the year, that identifies the area that you want to work on in your dissertation, the sources that you're going to use, and the supervisor you're going to work with. That will form the basis of the 10,000 word dissertation, which you write over the course of, your, of the summer. You'll see on the slide that it says a 10,000 word dissertation linked to the major course. Um, we actually don't talk about major and minor courses anymore, although some departments or so as do. Um, the idea of linking the dissertation to one of the courses you've studied is not to restrict your options, but rather to make sure that you are writing about something that you have a strong grounding in. The, you're going to have, um, you effectively have three and a half months to write your dissertation, which I think feels like quite a long time at the beginning of the degree, but goes very quickly. So we find that students do much better if they are able to start work on a dissertation that they, on a topic that they have some understanding of. It also, by linking the dissertation to a course, it also means that you've got a clear uh, someone who you can work with who is who is expert in that field and can guide you properly with 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 your dissertation work. So the connection to a course is, is very much intended to help you and support you rather than to restrict you. If you have a, a topic that you want to work on that doesn't link directly to a course, we'll, we'll pair you up with someone who is best able to supervise you. We'd encourage you to use what you have learned in the courses that you've studied with us to build towards that topic. So there's, there's definitely that kind of leeway, but we do ask that by the end of the second term, you have a clear idea of what your dissertation is going to be on so that we can set you up for support and guidance appropriately. I've got a list of the courses that are running next year at the end of this PowerPoint, um, and, and I'll talk you through those, uh, but there's a, a very broad range. Um, we do have comparative and global courses, although I think that these aren't running next year because of um, leave arrangements with members of staff, but there's certainly scope, and again, we encourage you strongly to think comparatively across the courses you're studying. There's also the option to, to do a language, um, either as part of your credits open option uh, or, or alongside the degree, uh, sort of on side through, through our evening studies class here at SOAS. Um, so our intensive language programs are a two-year MA, um, a two-year MA program, effectively a sort of double MA stretched over over two years that allows you to do all the components of the MA history alongside um, added credits in intensive language learning. While we teach a broad range of languages at SOAS, we have this intensive language program set up with only three languages at the moment, Japanese, Korean and Arabic. Um, this is because the intensive language program involves a summer study abroad period. Uh, where you work in an internationally renowned university in, in one of the, the in, in the country um, of the language that you're studying. Um, I think you're based in, in Tokyo if you study Japanese, you're based in Seoul if you study Korean, and I think you're based in Jordan if you do the Arabic intensive language program. All the intensive language uh, classes and the study abroad period are managed by my colleagues in the language department. They're not managed by history specialists. We provide the, the kind of the history discipline element of this program, but you're in the very capable hands of my colleagues in the in the language department who have been running these study abroad sessions and these language learning sessions for, for years. It's a very well established program. So the MA History and Intensive Language program is a 315 credit MA program, which includes the 120 taught uh, the 120 credits of the taught history courses that I showed you with the, in the last slide with the MA History program. Um, but, sorry, I should expand this fully. Um, but, it's, but with the intensive language courses added in around that. And the way in which this is divided is that you study 60 credits of your history program in the first year. So typically you do the core course and two term long courses alongside doing 60 credits of your intensive language um, teaching. And when I say intensive, I mean intensive and I mean pretty intense. Students who are studying these, these, these courses typically have language classes on four out of every five working days. Sometimes I think the Arabic program is even more intensive than that. Um, and the idea here is to really 
in many ways, students focus on the language in the first year of these programs to really build a basis in that language, um, to really get that established. Um, they then have the 45 credit study abroad in the summer, come back to SOAS where they do the remainder of their, their taught history courses. So the other the 60 credits of, of, of the taught courses, either um, four more history courses or two more history courses with their open options. And then they have slightly fewer hours of language learning in that second year on the basis that the language has been established through the first year and the summer study period. At the end of the fourth term, then students write their 60 credit dissertation following exactly the same setup as, as the straight MA history program. Um, all of these intensive language programs are open to students from any language ability. You don't need to know Jap any Japanese, Korean or Arabic beforehand. Equally, if you do know these languages, you're very welcome to join the program. At the beginning of your first term at SOAS, there's a number of, of placing exams that put you into classes based on your ability to take you through at that level. Um, these classes are taught alongside the BA language learning, language programs that SOAS offers. So um, it, it's not just an MA history class for your language classes. Um, but all the students that are studying these programs at the moment say that that's been a really nice way to get to know more people and certainly to build networks of, uh, of people interested in the same kinds of areas that, that they're studying in. It also gives you a way to meet people who are not necessarily history students, which, well, you know, clearly you're coming to, to meet other history students. That can be a, a good thing, too. Um, so this has overlaps with our straight MA history course, uh, but is... Uh, is an MA course for people who already have a clear idea of a history research project, who have a, a clear history research project in mind. It has been developed particularly for students who, who really want to do an MA as a sort of stepping stone to a clear PhD pro programme. They have a, a PhD programme in mind, perhaps. But that said, we also have students who have done this programme who don't necessarily want to go on and do a PhD, but do have a very clear project in mind for, for their career path and want to use this MA programme to follow that up. So the, the, the division of, of, of taught courses and, and to the dissertation is exactly the same as with our MA history programme. You have 120 taught courses, you have the 10,000 words 60 credit dissertation that you do in the summer period after term two, but you have two core or compulsory courses. One is core, one is compulsory, but effectively it's the same thing. So you do our um, uh, debating past crafting histories core course, the methodology training course alongside the MA history cohort. But you also have to do um, a research training course on a dissertation project, a research uh, project um, design course. So this core course is effectively a mini PhD. You are set up with one-to-one -one supervision with a member of staff in the department who, who is expert in the area of interest um, that, that you have. And you meet for, we, we sort of say, typically about eight hours of, of supervision over the course of the year uh, to talk through your project and to devise two essays two 5,000 word essays. Um, so the, the general practice is to write one essay in each of the terms. Uh, often, typically, one essay will look at uh, the question of sources around the project that you're interested in. Another might take a question of methodology. And the idea is that these two long essays help you to improve and set up your PhD, sorry, your dissertation proposal that you then write over the summer. Um, we do ask all applicants for this course to submit a research proposal. This isn't anything as like as sort of detailed a proposal as you need for a PhD programme, but we want to see that you've pinpointed a specific time period, a specific set of historical questions. You've thought about how you're going to work on that. So particularly kind of what sources you're interested in using. You've got some basis from which you can then begin to design the essays that you write for the research design course. The course. Um, so this is more of an independent research MA um, and we do require you to have a clear idea of, of what you're interested in, but we will work with you carefully to help you sculpt two, two essays that, will, as, that work as building blocks for the dissertation that you write at the end of the programme. 
You then, of course, still have 60 credits um, to, to cover through your taught classes. This can be through four of the taught options on the, the list A, on the, on the history list of courses. It could be two history courses and, and 30 credits open option. You can choose those as, as suit you. Um, so that's, um, yeah, as I say, that, that, that this is, you build, um, you build the scope in here to build the MA program that, that best suits your interests. You can also do the MA Historical Me Research Methods program with an intensive language option. So that works in the same basis as the, the, um, the, the MA History and Intensive Language program. Again, it's, you, this, this program works only with Japanese, Korean and Arabic. You will do 60 credits of, of taught language in the first year alongside typically the debating pass, the compulsory course and the research design course, your core course. You'll have your summer period away, your 45 credit summer period away, and then come back and do the remainder of your taught courses alongside 30 credits of language learning in your second year to get ready to write your, your, your dissertation. So the breakdown of history courses to language courses is the same for the MA historical methods with intensive language, but obviously the course, the, the history courses that you choose with the MA historical methods and intensive language follows this follows the breakdown on this slide rather than the MA history slide. The final thing I want to show you is uh, the list of courses that we are running next year. Um, we, like many um, universities at the moment, we have to work within the constraints of um, research funding uh, programmes, which means that uh, all, are, all colleagues are being encouraged to find uh, find funding for to pursue their own research, which often takes them out of the teaching calendar for a year. We endeavour to run as many courses as we can with expert teaching, as many courses with expert teaching as we can, but um, the the funding structure and the sabbatical structure does limit what we can does does affect quite which courses we can run on, on, a, on a yearly basis. We recognise that um, that has a big impact on our MA because if you're only here to study for a year, you, you, you really, you know, your, your course choices are somewhat dictated by members of staff who are available to teach that year. I should add that all of the MA history programmes I've talk, taught you through are available on a part-time option. Um, so you can study them over a two-year period and even a four-year period if you want to do the intensive language options. Although with, if you're going to do a part-time MA history and intensive language, that summer period away can't be done part-time. You have to do one summer block away. Um, the part-time courses are literally a, a division in half. So rather than doing um, rather than doing uh, four courses over each term or your core course and, and six taught options over two terms. You'll do your core course and two taught options in the first year. And then, um, so you do your core course that runs through term one and term two. You do one taught option in term one alongside that one taught option in term two alongside the core course. And then in your second year, you would do two taught options in the first term and two taught options in the second year. So it's literally a sort of a split of the hours and the classes across uh, the, 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 the two years if you're taking these courses part time. The advantage of doing the part time course is that you will are likely to get slightly different range of course options offered for the years that you're studying with us. Um, I hope that that's clear. If not, please do ask me questions in, in the question and answer session that will follow shortly and, and I'll, ex I'll try to explain that slightly, slightly better. But so if you come to study with us next year from next September 2018, these are the courses that we'll be running uh, over, over that academic year. Um, I would flag that the one area that we're not able to, to cover in depth with our MA teaching next year is our Southeast Asian area options. If you are interested in coming to study a South, Southeast Asian history in particular, please do drop me a line and consider if you can apply in 2019 to 20 when I very much hope that we will be able to run those courses. They do exist. It's just around teaching availability for next year. Um, you can see from the titles here that these Courses are framed in fairly general terms. Um, so if I take 
give you the example of my MA history course, which is gender law and the family in the history of modern South Asia, the fourth one down on the list of, of options. Um, I, this course runs from the establishment from sort of the 17th century, the very early days of company presence in, in South Asia, through to um, post-liberalization India. Um, so we cover different chronological ranges and different themes and topics each week. Um, and I have students writing on Mughal ideas of gender through to discussions of monsoon wedding and Gabi Kushi Gabi Gam. So the course is designed to appeal to a very broad range of interests in, um, in, in of people who are interested in, in gender law and the family. And lots of the people who take that option are as many people who are interested in the kind of more historical um, period of, of, of South Asian history. There's also lots of people who are interested in the post-colonial, much more kind of contemporary period of South Asian history. Um, so, um, and, and these courses are all arranged slightly differently, but they're all designed to sort of be taught somewhat thematically to help you find something that is of interest to you, to, to cater to a broad range of interests. Um, okay, I, that's the... Uh, end of, of the, the presentation that I have for you, I will just show you my uh, email address in case you want to get in touch. Um, I'll show that to you now. Uh, there, so that's en2 at soas.ac.uk. Um, if you've got any questions, do please drop me a line. Um, but I'm now going to take questions from the chat feed. Um, so Dhridhi is studying in India um, and is pursuing a, a three year long undergraduate degree in comparative literature um, rather than history. Um, and as I understand your question, Dhridhi, the, the, the question is whether doing a comparative literature degree is enough to mean you can gain admittance to the MA history program or whether or not you'd need to do another degree or a kind of something more historical in focus before you could be eligible for the program. I think that's what I'm, under, that's what I'm understanding from your question. No, you would absolutely uh, be able to um, apply straight from your comparative literature degree. Um, uh, what we would ask you to do is to use your uh, application statement to talk about how you feel your degree so far has prepared you for the kind of MA history program that we teach here. Why have you decided to now study MA, a more a historical course like the one that we offer? Um, and, and what would you like to do with it? How do you, how will you use the skills that you have so far to, um, uh, to, to, to kind of excel in, in, in this course here. We, in many ways, our, our firmer requirement is that you have a 2-1 or, or international equivalent undergraduate degree um, because that suggests an ability to deal with sort of the stamina, I guess, of an MA history, of, of an MA programme. Um, but we are very much open to students from a range of backgrounds. I would say that this year we've admitted, admitted students with, from a science background, and from a performing arts background, all of whom wrote quite specific statements explaining why they were now interested in history and in history of the regions that we teach. Um, we do consider every application on an individual basis. So um, please do use that statement to explain exactly why you want to come and study with us. But that's absolutely not not doing a history BA is absolutely not a hindrance to admittance at all. And, and we would encourage you to apply if you're interested. Um, Drithi's also asked about um, oh internship for international students. We don't offer formal internships as part of the MA history program. We have begun working on this, but it became such a complicated piece of work for us to manage. Um, informally, members of staff may be able to give you information to help you set up internships. For international students, there's also questions of visa and visa status, which um, I don't know enough about, I'm afraid. What I would suggest, though, if you've got any questions about visas, um, please do write to my colleagues in, in admissions. Um, and their e email address is mastersadmissions, all one word, at soas.ac.uk, or you can find uh, their details on, on the website. 
So my next question is from Anne Lewins uh, about part-time study. So if you study part-time, is there a rule about how many credits you can take each year? Are you expected to choose 90 credits per year exactly? Um, so in fact, it's not 90 credits per year, no, because 60 credits of that is the dissertation, which will be done has to be done over a summer. I mean, if you're studying part-term, part-time, you can work on the dissertation for, for two years. We'd encourage you to do that. But you would need to divide the 120 credits of taught courses over the two years. We strongly recommend a fairly even division of that. So to have 60 credits in one year, 60 credits in the other. Um, usually, again, we recommend that you do the methodology course in the first year and two tour options in, alongside that. And then four um, options in, in, in your second year of part time study. I think that there is probably scope to adapt that if need be. Um, uh, if, if that was, uh, if you needed to, we could, if you could explain that's your situation to us and, and, and um, we, we could sort of try and work that out for you. I can't offer any guarantees, but we'd certainly be keen to help you as far as possible. But the standard arrangement is usually that sort of 60 credit of taught courses in year one, 60 credits of taught courses in year two. Um, I would also, it, it, it might well be worth flagging that the credit framework system that we use here assumes that one credit is equal to about 10 hours of work. So a 15 credit course is equal to 150 hours of work. Um, having sat down and sort of worked out the maths of this over a two term structure, the, the credit system is, is anticipates something like 60 hours of work a week. It's a pretty big workload. Uh, that, 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 you know, and that workload includes everything, reading for your class, you know, we need to think about kind of getting access to that material. Um, but, but an MA history course is a large workload, and I would stress that, that I, people have asked if they can do the MA history alongside full-time work. My, my answer would be no, we expect presence in classes, this isn't a distance learning programme, you need to be able to attend classes in, pro, in, in person. And you really need to have the space in your calendar to take on quite serious levels of research work if you really want to get the most out of, of the MA history, um, which obviously is, you know, it's a time commitment and a financial commitment. So we would encourage you to think about the hours um, that you need to set aside for it. So I, I hope that answers your question somewhat, Anne. Um, so Akain from Japan. Um, so there's a number of questions here. Um, so uh, let me start. So the first question from Akan is about when the department de start, decides uh, on an instructor for dissertation writing. So that's a great question. We don't decide your, the, who, who you're going to work with for your dissertation. You have to do that. The whole point of the dissertation module is for you to gain experience of designing, setting up and then executing um, the a research project all on all on your own. You need to set up the research questions that you're interested in looking at. Think about how you're going to um, how you're going to research the project, and then and then think about how you're going to write it. So the point is that you choose your dissertation supervisor. As I said earlier on, we encourage you to think about um, building your dissertation project around your taught courses. So it may well be if you've got a course that's very interesting to you, that becomes the basis of your thought for your dissertation, you may well want to work with the tutor of that course to work on for, for your dissertation. Um, and then you'll have separate meetings with that tutor to work out your research plan, to devise your um, dissertation plan over terms one and two, and then a, series, you know, a couple of meetings at the beginning of the summer period with them to set you up on your MA work, which you'll do over the summer. Um, I also, as Emma Convener, I run a series of workshops in that first term, really helping you to devise the project, giving you the milestones that you need to build a research project. So we will absolutely help you to build a research project. We'll explain what you need to do, but the choice is yours about how you, where you, what you do with it and who you work with on it. So the second question then is how often will you see the instructor? Well, this is this is also a great question and is an incentive for you to start thinking about your dissertation from the beginning of the course. 
we are available in the, in the terms that we're teaching, we're very available. The, the summer period when you're writing your dissertation is also the period when members start writing their research work too. So all of your, your, your dissertation supervisors will be available throughout the terms um, and we'll set up a series of meetings with you at the end of the second term. So I normally endeavor to hold three one hour meetings with my MA students at the end of the second term. And then I'm available on email through the summer. But the expectation is that students will be well enough established by that point to do the research themselves. So I'm working with six students this year on their MA dissertations and we've met throughout terms one and two and I'm just about to hold my second and third hour long meeting with them um, to, to help them formulate their project. Um, so you do need to keep in mind that your supervisor is going to be doing their, their own research work over the summer, but they do, they will, that, that there's a commitment from us to meet with you for a substantial period, for around three hours to set up the project, three hours and then email availability to set up the project in the first instance. So the third question is how many students will be included in the dissertation writing class in most cases? So we don't run dissertation writing classes specifically. We do have a language, there's, there's a specific writing workshop department at SOAS that, that, that runs uh, writing workshop, research skills workshops through the years. We'll give you information about that, to help to set you up for that. I run three two hour workshops to kind of help you build the project proposal, think through the dissertation, and that will be, those, those workshops will run for the group as a whole, so it would be a, your, your main co cohort of around 35 to 40 students. But then you should use the, uh, the office hours that your tutors will offer. All tutors offer at least two hours, office hours a week and are normally available around that via email to, to meet on a one-on-one -on -one basis to devise your dissertation. Um, so there's also a question here, is, is there any possibility that I can't take your preferred course, so the list A optional courses in other departments? Um, so you do need to take, a requirement for our MA History programme is that you take um, a, a set number of history courses. So you need to take 60 credits of history courses, you need to take four courses offered on list A. Um, we will, so we hope that you can take all the courses on this day that you would like to. Timetabling obviously is an issue in this, um, and it may be that there are classes that clash. We try and avoid this as much as possible, um, but the timetable team at SOAS are extraordinary human beings. Be precisely because our degree programs allow people so much choice between different programs, they're having to balance a lot of different demands. Um, so there is a chance that you that there will be you will have a clash in your timetable with between courses that you like, um, but we will help you to find courses that fit your interests as best um, as, as best as we can. I'd say that we you know our commitment to building tailor-made courses for you runs deep. As well as having academic tutors, you'll also be assigned to a personal advisor who will meet with you right at the beginning of the program, talk you through and advise you on your course options. So that would be the person to sort of talk through any problems with timetabling that you're having. Um, there are a lot of colleagues in other departments outside of history who that run very historical courses and we can and we have recognised some of those courses taught outside the history department as history courses that can that can count for your, your, your list A courses. Um, but we do need to manage that on a kind of individual basis. So do please try to find as many list A courses as you, that interest you as possible. But if not, come and talk to me um, and, and talk to your personal advisor who you'll be allocated to right at the beginning of the programme. Um, so this, the, the fifth question is, all the classes are held during term one, term two. So what can you do in the third term? The third term is for you to write your dissertation, which is a serious piece of work. So that's right, all the classes run in term one and term two. But the third term is set up very much for you to begin your research project, to meet with your dissertation supervisor, really kind of hone your archives, set up that dissertation, which you then write over the summer. So the third term is the research term, where your, where your members of staff are still available for, for meeting, where you really need to set that project up. Um, 
What is the dissertation deadline and is there, are there any students who submit early and how early? So the dissertation deadline is normally around the 15th of September. Certainly students do submit early um, and, and you can submit the dissertation whenever you like. All, all, all assessed coursework is submitted using our online system, which uh, allows you to, I think, take down work and, and put up second versions of it right the way up until the official deadline. So you could submit something early, then decide you actually want to submit a revised copy and submit that again closer to the deadline. Um, you need to submit the dissertation when you think it's ready. Um, as I sort of in terms of explaining about the sort of the credit system and, and in relation to hours of work. So the, the dissertation is, is valued at 60 credits, which is the equivalent of 600 hours of work. It's a serious piece of work. Um, and we encourage students to take that seriously. We'll give you the, the, we'll explain how you need to get ready for it and prepare for it. But I think you'll find that you'll need a lot of that summer to work on that dissertation. So the seventh question is, when can I obtain a library card? As soon as you enroll at SOAS, your student card that will get you access to all the buildings also gets you access to the library and all of the resources that functions with that. Your email ID will get you access to all of the online resources that the library has. Um, so, so that's one of your first tools that you're given when you join SOAS. And then the, the eighth question is, how many MA students are likely to be interested in Chinese area, area per year? Um, that is a question that is very tricky to answer. Um, uh, it varies a lot. We have a lot of students interested in, in Chinese um, history um, and, and students who come to study Chinese history from outside the MA history program, so history of art, um, recruit a lot of students who are interested in China who come and study our courses, uh, but, but the numbers change every year. What I would say is that we, we have had a lot of interest in Chinese history this year. Next year we plan to run all tutorials at a capped number of 20 students, so you won't ever be in a class bigger than 20 and we hope to keep you in classes smaller than that so i hope that that answers that question um, and the ninth question is it possible to take sources and research design and historical research if you're getting the ma history instead of the the ma uh, in, in historical methods no the sources and research design course is specific to the ma historical methods course that is you can only do that course as part of the historical research methods Program. So that, that is precisely the difference between the two MA courses. If you want to do the Sources and Research Design course, you need to apply to the MA Historical Methods program. And to do that, you also need to write um, a, a research proposal setting out clearly your areas of interest, what sort of the, the topics, the themes, the sources you'd like to explore in those two 5,000 word essays uh, that form the basis of that course. So I, I, yeah, I hope that that's clear and and, um, and 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 answers all of those questions. I haven't got any more questions that have been submitted via chat. Um, good, thank you. I'm glad I answered all those questions. Uh, Kane, thanks. Um, if anybody has more questions, please feel free to to send them now. Um, or if not, please feel free to email me at en2 at soas.ac.uk after this event. I'm, I'm available and would always be very happy to, to answer any concerns, questions, queries, um, as specific as, as you need, um, as, as you might have.